And I'm Ron. And we have a couple guest hosts with us. As you know, Tierra had her baby on MLK Day, so we will be rotating guest hosts until she comes back. Um, we have Nita the Diva. You guys know her. She's been a friend of the show. She has her own YouTube channel. We have our boy, Jay Bill, with us back in the building to recap Raising Canaan, episode 308, Reckoning. And I want to get the housekeeping out the way before we jump into this recap. Please yes, like and subscribe this video. The more you like, that helps push us out to a wider audience. And we appreciate your support. Mm -hmm. With and all thumbs, that being, and a, well, thumbs up, you know, the whole. The yeah, whole, that was it. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Thumbs up. So with that being said, let's jump into the recap. And so I think we should start off with Lou. <laughs> uh, Lou. Okay. He's reached rock bottom. OK, and um, like I said last week, either I don't think Rock's going to take him out. I know that for a fact. I know Marvin's not because Marvin's in the help me group. And, you know, so the only thing left for Lou is to take himself out. And I think he's very much on that. He's reached rock bottom. And the way he was looking at that gun in the car, uh, I thought maybe it would be, you know, this episode, but it didn't happen. But, you know, Lou. My biggest thing is if you're going to go to Rock's neighborhood and confess what you do for a living, why didn't you go to the police station and do it? So you see, there's some there's some sensibility in what he's doing, and he's just really screwing with Rock. And if I were Lou, I wouldn't push that envelope too much. To me, I, I'll go, I'll go ahead, Tiff. I, oh, I, I was going to say, what do you guys think? I, I think I think personally, Lou is definitely at his rock bottom. We can't. We, there's no question there, but. He always does it when he's super drunk, just like he blacked out, you know, when he went over and talked to um dude's mother. I forgot, I forgot the name right at right. the top. Yeah. yeah. And so when he when he went over and talked to her mother, now I'm talking to the to, to the mother the, of the guy that, that was killed. Yeah, um, Scrap's mom. Yeah, Scrap Scrap's mom. I, I, thought you said, I thought you said rock. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, when he went to Scrap's mother's crib and he said everything he said, and then when he recalled it to him, he was like, I I don't remember any of that. So Obviously, he's like so torn and, and and beaten down. He doesn't even know where he's at at this point. I don't think that he would go to the police because I don't think that that's his intention. His intention is on cleansing like spirits and souls and, and things of that nature. So he seems like he's going directly to where the problems are. And so I don't know. I, I think that I did think he was going to die this episode for a minute. I thought he was going to um, shoot himself. Um, but. I don't know. I think he's he's going. To, he probably won't make it out the season because I don't see, I don't see where he can come back to doing anything crime related. So I don't, I don't see where where he would have a um a future in the program. The only way I can see that is if they do end up sending him off to a program, and and sending him away. That's the only way I could probably really see him. You know, going away. I mean, because he did say he was going away. He left the um the tape for Shirley to give the famous and everything and stuff. So it set it up that if he does not off himself or if he is not out, they they could do that. They could find a program for him and he can come back clear headed next season. Let's see if they explore that avenue. Um, Nita, what, what about do you, you think? Anita? Yes, for me, I definitely think that he is on the same path of his father. The fact that they kind of foreshadowed that and brought that up. And um, it's something about Rock that just triggered him because he was on a, a good path. He was doing the things. And the next thing you know, she comes in and she's trying to make amends, but it's only for her own uh, benefit is not to help him and so he, she sent him down this downward spiral he's definitely at rock bottom and I do think he might take himself out he, That's what he I might he might but I think you know to your question about him going to her house and not the police and first off you know I don't think he's a snitch in that regard even even drunk I don't think he oh, would do that I but mean, also I, he, he went to he her house he made a public because, announcement at the house I mean but but <laughs> right but he did it to expose rock he said they need to know who you are he said we he are said, he, said, he, said, he, he said we are he said we are 
Wait, but he I know, said but to what, her first. But I guess what I'm saying. Who you are and then who I am. But what I'm saying is he made a public announcement in the street. Now, I agree with Jay in the sense that, you know, he's not going to probably remember anything. But the demons, the real demons that he has to fight with is his mama. See, his mother is the one that got Ooh. all this started in the first place. Because that mom's is twisted, man. And that mama, that mama. I, it made me think about how they came up. Because first off, Rock had to pay her to even sit <laughs> with her, her own son. son. <laughs> had to pay her, and not only that, she burnt the breakfast. I was like, well, well, it's clear that Rock was the one that was probably cooking and holding exactly. everybody down when exactly. they were young. That they were because she clearly was not holding them down, hmm. and then she was berating him too, like a grown man and he still need his mama and stuff like that. So I, I was like, I, I would have left too if I were Luke. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough about him. I, 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 I just yeah, don't yeah. see. I, I don't see him making it out of. If if he makes it out of uh, episode ten, I would really be surprised. Right. Well, I appreciate Marvin making a plea on his behalf, though. You know, saying like, "Hey, you know, like I've been there before," because Marvin did have a. a, a he was strung up on drugs. Yeah, so, yeah, he said, "I clean myself up. Please give him a chance because he know his sister." Because he yeah. know it might be in the back of his mind to take him out. Right. He said, all he doing is out of his mouth. You know, so I so I, I think he was just like trying to put that out there like, like, hey, I, I know it's probably in the back of your mind to let's <laughs> delete him, but this still our brother. We got to help him, you know, yeah. so and, and um, did y'all see the little pictures of the family on the um, mm -hmm. that picture reminded me of a house party, the original house party. <laughs> like a kid in the face picture. <laughs> right. Yeah, but um, Kanan, I wanted to talk about that because you know the next scene, Kanan was pretty much there with Ronnie and Snaps and Pop, and they were trying to give him alcohol. He refused it, but he was like, um, they asked him whether he'd rather be respected or feared, and he said, "Good answer, <laughs> you know, it's a great answer, it's a great answer." Yeah, yeah it was great answer. Yeah, he, and he said it's a trick question. He said because, you know, in order to be respected, you have to be feared or vice versa. But what I also picked up is Snaps called Ronnie Urkel. And I'm like... He's been calling him Urkel since yeah. he, he I know, but, him. That's but, the first time you heard that? No, it's but clear I, that they don't no, really it's like clear, him. Right. It's clear that she doesn't have any respect for Ronnie. Mm -hmm. And Ronnie, you know, has sat there and Really, just he takes it. So, which is out of character for me as far as Ronnie is concerned. And, you know, when she said it this time, she said it with a little more venom. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, is this will Ronnie set her straight? Will he, you know, but he just sat there. So, no, I, I think so he, apparently, he, I think he, he, the money is more involved. You know, right now, Ronnie wants to get his thing together. So he'll do whatever it takes to get uh, Ronnie, he Ronnie's to strategic. Everything about Ronnie's strategic, just like when he beat the guy with the car door. He always he waits. He's never he wait. he, he's never reaction in in real time. He's always delayed reaction. So yeah. anything he does, you may not see his response to that until the end of the um you know of the of the uh, season or whatever. But I, I, I'm I, sorry. Go, go, go ahead. Now I was just saying that with overall Ronnie's character is supposed to be a little bit of an enigma. You're not supposed to fully get what he would and would not do. You're supposed to be a little surprised because everything he does is always on a delayed time. And so it's never like you could really, you can't judge anything. I know like with the famous thing, like he got right and famous behind, you know, with that thing, but the it, he kind of picks and chooses who he's going to tolerate and who he's going to respond to, you know, immediately. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I, what I got from the character. Right. And this is what I think about Ronnie. First of all, I think, and, I, and I'm going to come to you, Nita, because I want to hear what you have to say. I, I think that ne that Ronnie has respect for Snaps. There's a certain um, reverence that he has towards him. And I think that's another reason why he hasn't gone at um at her that way. Because even when, when he first came into the picture, when he came back to them and she tried to hug him and he was kind of like this, we know he's awkward. But a lot of that was too because she is Snaps. Um, wife. So I right. think that's the part of the, own, the main reason why he didn't go because he did snap at her the first time they got back. When she said something, um, when he said something slick to her, 
um, snap said A to um to Ronnie. He, he, he did check him in the very first. Let episode. me get this. Let me get this straight. It snaps and pops, right? <laughs> it snaps yeah. and pops. Okay, so pops. pops. So she snaps. No, no he the, snaps. the husband is snaps. She, oh, pops. She, okay, it, so it's now, her. And okay. so she, yeah. So oh, when when he did snap, her, he did snap I mean, her before snaps checked Ronnie. He said, "Hey." Oh, like, okay. don't go at my wife. So I think that's the only reason why he ain't, he let that slide. I must have missed that. I must have missed that. I don't remember him checking him. About he that. did. I, when he said it was, the, it was the episode, it was episode four. It was when he first went to them to, to say Dean. And when he said, um, when he said to Snaps, I mean, to yeah, to Pops, when she said something about rock out the game, you know, this and the other and stuff. And he said, how the F would you know? He said, you out, y'all out the game too. How the oh. F would you know? And okay. um, and Snap said, A. Yeah. And okay. then, yeah. So he did, he did insert himself. Okay. You know, okay. so that's why I said, I think that Ronnie, like, especially because he worked for them back in the day, mm -hmm. the respect that he has for them. And as you saw by the end of this episode, we saw... We heard that they got more pull than we yeah. thought they had. Like when they when they dropped that nugget on um on Rock when mm -hmm. Rock was flexing, like you don't see who behind me. He was like, no, you don't. Stefano. No, Stefano. <laughs> if we tell him to sit the f down, that's what he gonna do. So you don't you don't got the the uh the pull you know, that she thinks. She, yeah. Yeah, we we had some power plays up in there, didn't we? Yes, yes. yes. I, yeah, and I. And I guess that's what I'm really noticing with Ronnie. Um, he's he's in that he likes that that arena, and 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 he responds to it, uh, you know, rather positively, if you will. But um, you know, I I still can't get this Michael Myers effect out of the, my mind that Tiffany is so so aptly posted. But you know, it, it's just you never know what he's going to do when he's going to do it, um, and it's. And but so far he's been rather docile in terms of the game, getting in, getting back into the game. And I guess I can respect that. That's what he wants to do. But Kanan, ah, I'm you know, I, I don't know what to say about him. I I'm I'm, I'm trying to. It's complicated. He's extreme. Yeah, he's he's going through a lot of things. But you know, Kanan, man, you only got a couple of times to mess up. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta think like this too. What the what it seems that they're doing from a story arc is they're trying to transition him to the Canaan we know from power. And I think that that is kind of building it where he's becoming more reckless. He's doing a lot more things like the idea that he went from the girl who obviously got pregnant to the to the other girl in the group, the fact that he kicked famous out of his own apartment, the fact that he joined up with Ronnie, the fact, you know, all of these things are supposed to be that he's no longer moving with any kind of logic. And it was a time when people could get through the canon. It's gotten to the point where nobody, even Jukebox used to at least be able to kind of like snap them back into place. And as you saw in the last episode, I know you guys already recounted it, but she wasn't even able to kind of get through to him when she started screaming at him. And she was the one who would kind of be his version of Rock, the way Rock is to, um, you know, to, to her brothers, to Lou and them. Um, so I think that Kanan is just, they just trying to do that transition in peace with him where he finds his independence and becomes that crazy Kanan that we knew in the, in the other series. Well, that may be true. I, 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 I just see that in his, in, you know, inserting himself, uh, just like with the uh, social worker, you know, and that's a situation that could come back and bite him in the ass. Mm -hmm. OK, because, you know, she specifically told she had, you know, she told him what sh she needed from him. And that was to stay at home. And then she then he six Michael Myers on her. And <laughs> I'm just not sure how long that can last. I mean, after all, she works for the government. Now, she may be scared. You know what? Out of her mind. But to me, that can come back to bite Canaan. Uh, I don't think she come. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he can, but I don't think I, the way he pulled up on her. I don't think she coming back no time soon. <laughs> and not I, not I, any time soon, but I, I, I want to speak to what Jason said. I want to speak to Jason said because you said that he obviously got uh, uh, Aisha pregnant. 
I, we talked I about this last week. I read that differently. I think she has an eating disorder. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I, yeah, think she, she I think she's be, mm-hmm. I think she's bulimic because yeah. you know when she um when she uh vomited at the movie theater. Yeah, yeah, at the at the movie theater, the, the way she was acting, the body image stuff, and then in the bathroom with Juke, she said um after she threw up, she said I must have ate something bad, and um. Juke said, you must have eaten bad. I'm eating stuff bad a lot. And so she said, I'm working on it, Juke. So I was like, oh, she has an eating disorder. And even the other girl mentioned it too. So that's yeah. that's how I read mm-hmm. that. Oh, listen, yeah. or, or, or it may be uh, um, like a, a switch, you know, a switch play on that one. I don't know. But like maybe she is, maybe it's just an eating disorder. Yeah. I, just, I just look at it, whatever, whatever the case is, you can see that Canaan in general is just becoming more reckless. Oh, about hope. And, and, and I think they're just trying to transition that character to the point, you know, obviously she's about to start messing with, you know, jukebox. At least that's what it, at least that's, that's what it appears to me too. too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not as if either way, you know what I'm saying? It was going to go in that direction. So we'll see where, you know. Where, where and, then, and aside from that, she, she stopped Kanan while in the theater, you know, when he was right. trying to make his move. And she didn't allow him to, you know, touch her in that way. So apparently they must not have had a sexual um No, she encounter. said she said it's too fast, King. Right. She's told him. Exactly. It's too fast. So I, I think that she's yeah. a good girl. And that's right. one thing that you said about her. She's a good, she's a good right. girl. Exactly. And so she was like, it's too fast. Right. Right. You know, um, Anita, what were you right say? You know, I saw you. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say to debunk that. That's why I brought up the movie theater when you were talking <clears throat> about how she was kind of, you know, usually. Um, once you become intimate with someone, it's like all bets are off. Like, right. you know, we're, we went there and, you know, it wouldn't be no rebuffing like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. 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 So, yeah, and we saw, you know, speaking of Aisha, we saw her at, at, at Juke's house, you know, practicing her, her moves and stuff, <laughs> you know, and I kind of thought her. they were flirting all along, though. In the beginning, they were flirting, it seemed as if. Mm-hmm. And then came in, mm-hmm. and, and, and it was kind of like, um, remember Marvin says that you got good taste and all of that. Uh-huh. It seemed like she was already on that path, uh-huh. before, and it was kind of like misdirection with Kanan coming in to kind of throw you off that. And then now we're kind of circling back to that. Man, oh, yeah, I think I think she she I think she always was curious. She probably right. was always curious, and right. and she said she really liked Kanan and stuff. But you see, that went left. He made her go home on a train. Stop. Um, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, he just every week. Look, I feel like we have a deep bench this week for the hands list. And Kanan is again on my hands list. Oh, uh, hands. Him showing up at the rehearsal with old girl, with Crystal and stuff was fine. Yes, you know, you, you messing with her bandmate and then you're going to come to the rehearsal and you're kissing and stuff in front of her. That's foul. So he definitely on my hands list that week, this week for that. But um, we saw that Juke opened up to um to Aisha and told her about Nicole. So I was mm-hmm. like, so that's bringing them closer. Right. That's that's definitely bringing them closer and stuff. So um moving from I Duke, like not- they're not rushing the storyline. I love the pacing, how they're really building the things and we're not just rushing through. Um Kanan feels a little bit rushed like the turn to the dark side it almost feels a little rushed, but I think it's kind of maybe a response to Twitter or something like that. Like everybody is just waiting, chomping at the bit for his turn to the dark side. So maybe that's what that is. But you know why that is? Because people are ready to see Ghost and Tommy. <laughs> that's exactly. everybody on, on Twitter. They want to know who's Breeze. They want to yeah. know when is Ghost and Tommy coming into the picture. Yeah. And they know that part of the dark turn you know, with, with Kanan and also involves Ghost and Tommy. Yeah. You know, so so I think that's a lot of it. They're trying to move the story. I'm a little so confused we why we it. haven't seen any any um instances Iterations of, of it. Yet. Um yeah, yeah. So uh-huh. somewhere by now, according to the storyline based on the, the power series, we would have already really been introduced to um to Ghost right. and Tommy. I think they're coming because I think it's no, because I, I, I think you saw that episode too, You saw that. Except that, and I agree. And I agree with you, Jay, in the sense that because Rock is still very much in the picture and has her hands on Kanan in, in, in some respect, Kanan hasn't gotten away from Rock. 
And that, mm -hmm. I think when we see that, then we'll see mm -hmm. the emergence mm -hmm. of, of uh, the true yeah. pain and, 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 and uh, ghost. So, so now the question becomes, how how do they break away? How does Rock and Kanan separate? Now, I, I saw a little bit of it uh, this episode with again Rock stepping in and trying to get Kanan, you know, trying to throw him throw him off by doing something she she thought was best for Kanan. But we still have that that thing with with the department, the social, uh, you know, um, social. Um, uh, services. services. So we still have that to deal with. Now, you said that uh, you think the social, social service person is scared away, but she still has an open case. Now, how does she close it? I don't know or if she closes it at all, but something has to happen to let us know that Kanan is free from rock. Either rock dies or there's That's eventually sort of... what's going to happen. Yeah. We, 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 still we still don't know what Ronnie said either to the, to the social worker either. So it's not like we really know anything. We well, that's know. why I say. That's why I say. I I, I can't <laughs> say that. The, I couldn't say that the case is closed because we have like no idea said, what he even said to her. Right. All he did was look funny at her, like a Michael Myers thing. Nah, and he said, you know, he said some said stuff. Something to her. Well, I'm, he sure he did. I'm sure he did, but she just doesn't seem like she seems like that type of person to go run to the police and say, "Oh my God, this is what happened." So, I don't yeah. Know. Well, you know, well, I don't know. It, it, not if she's scared of I, I look, let me let me be quiet. But she doesn't but she doesn't know, know Ronnie's history. Know. See, my point here here, and the other thing about that in terms of uh, you know from a um pr production part, we she really doesn't know Ronnie's history to be he could have threatened her family. You don't know what he said. He might have been like, like, it, you better it, leave us alone or we're gonna pull pull up on you, your family, the whole nine. Yeah, but like I said, you don't know his history. It is not like the cartel pulled up on her, on her, you know, where she would have history to know what they can can and cannot do. She doesn't know Ronnie enough to know what Ronnie really is capable of, you know, because she doesn't know how many bodies Ronnie has, uh, uh, you know, in, in up his sleeve. So, Listen, not to be argued with. It's just to say, I think I'm not trying that, to find out, Ron. I'm no, I'm not either. Yeah. Um, if he's pulled up on like that. It's he a job, Juan. It's a job. Her again. You see, Pernessa, Pernessa, you, you heard what Vanessa said to Rock. She was like, I ain't trying to fool with Ronnie. You need to go. I ain't trying to tell you nothing. But she I'm knows Ronnie's, but she knows Ronnie's history though. So that's my point. It, you know, to it, not know if somebody if somebody, if somebody jumps somebody, in your face, a man, if a man a approaches a woman aggressive like that, no no woman's gonna be like, Oh well, I'm, he he did this, and I'm gonna just try. I'm gonna try my hand. I'm not gonna believe he's not gonna do this to me. No, yeah, man, he, no, but but to understand, like, oh, but also I, understand I, that if somebody that jumped at you like that, you also want to get protection. So to not because here's the point: if you jump at me like that, and I'm just gonna assume that you can kill me, then I'm gonna get protection, which means I go to the police and say, "Hey, this is what happened, and I'm gonna need protection." That's the natural progression of a person who's afraid, not just to run away and never to be seen again. That just doesn't make common sense in terms of what a person would do who is actually afraid. Now, if you know history and you know that person, their history, if you know what they can do, then that makes more sense. Well, but, and it's also it's also contingent upon what he said there, because it, what could it, he it, say? It, it, I, I'm going to kill you and your family. Okay, I mean. Uh -huh. He might have said, "Go do your homework on me." He said, "He might have said, I'm, 'I'm certified. I'll see you.' You just never know what the what exactly. <laughs> you don't know exactly. what Well, but that's my whole premise. We don't know, so I I can't count her out. That's what I'm basically saying. Right, right. I'm right, not right. counting her out because we don't that? know. So I'm I'm thinking that she's going to show up again before uh, uh sure. before uh maybe. episode ten. Maybe. No, I got a question. Why do you think the writers or the director chose not to show what Ronnie said to her? To leave us hanging. I think I think it's kind of like the um well pulp fiction with the, with the briefcase. Yeah, yeah. Some things are just meant to move the story along. They're, they're not necessarily meant to be there so that you can actually examine them. Because if you examine them, sometimes it goes in the wrong direction. They just wanted right. to give the impression that this guy's a killer. He gave her the killer vibe when he ran over there. She won't be back. It was kind of that's why I said it's very hard to say how they're trying to frame it direction wise. I agree with you, Ron. We don't know. She don't might know. pop up in a in a in a um you know a precinct or she may pop up in court somewhere down the line. But 
you know my feelings and I told you when when you need come back to kill Ronnie I think that we're going to have a whole different discussion at that point because like I told y'all the streets need a body and I ain't seen one yet so right. so anybody <laughs> does anybody know how old Kanan uh, actually was before he you know when he actually got started with uh, Ghost the, do we know um I, 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 don't, I don't know, but I, I know that, um, you know, I said this last week that Sasha Penn said that Ghost and Tommy are like five years younger than him and stuff. And and for all we know, one of the little kids that we've seen could be could be Ghost. They were, you know, we, we, I saw one boy that kind of looked like he could be Ghost. Yeah, I, I did too. I did too. And then in one of the scenes, as they were walking, um, when Rock was buying the, um, the, the property, it was spray painted Tommy on the wall. So mm -hmm. I was like, they dropping Easter eggs that they're coming. And, oh, yeah. you know, um, Jason, you haven't been on the show with me. You know, I've been saying all season long that I feel like Ronnie is Breeze. He may not be, but I feel like it. And, it, and the reasons why I said was because of um, the influence they had on, on Kane and, and stuff. Um, him coming into the game, the routine. It looks like he has OCD. Um you know how he yeah. wants things a certain way, and and one of the things that they that um that Kanan has said in OG Power about Breeze was that um Ghost when he killed him he knew that where Breeze would be because he had the same routine um you know every night he watched Jeopardy and then I saw another clip of um Ghost recently um online where Ghost was talking to Tariq. And Tariq was like, you killed your friend Breeze because you wanted his territory? And Ghost says to Tariq, he was like, Breeze was a bad dude. He would have got us all killed. Right. So I thought about the, the mannerisms for Breeze. So he may not be him. He may not. But that my theory, the things I feel like has been Easter eggs drop, I, I feel like he's Breeze. Now, if he dies this season, we know he ain't Breeze because Ghost <laughs> has, to, has to kill him. <laughs> you right. know, but... um. That is my, my question about that, Tiffany. Did you also hear when he had the conversation with Tariq in the OG Power talking? To, I thought I heard him say he loved Breeze. But yeah, he did say he loved Breeze. He did say, he did yeah. say, I love Breeze. Like but he also said know. he was a Thank you, Nita. And this is what I've been saying all along that Ronnie is not the kind of person that anybody can love. There's just zero character about him. No, mm -hmm. There's just nothing there to love. And so. And and even when even when uh, uh, Ghost and, and and Tommy spoke about Breeze, they they spoke about the respect they had of him, but they had it seemed like there was more sentiment about Breeze than just this zero factor that 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 um, that uh, Ronnie, Ronnie that Ronnie gives. Now again, I have to say because uh, you said something to the effect, Jay, that you know the way they write things sometimes they they take you one way and then switch you and bring you to another level which by, by the way Kanan could possibly go to Julie get out at 18 and that's when he meets Tommy and uh and Ghost so that's why I say that social security and that social services thing could still come oh, back I mean, to listen, heart it's not, it's not, it's, it could revisit he ain't out the water and I saw a preview for next week and when um you know, Ghost, I mean, Rock is saying to Kanan, like, you know, like she's shutting him down. And he was like, I have people I can call on you. Mm. So I was like, oh. So I'm just like, is he talking about social services or he talking about his people? He talking about Snap Pops and, and Ronnie. Because I there I saw a trailer that somebody going to be shooting at Rock's truck, you know, and stuff. So, you know, she she pissed snapping them off. This well, she did piss off snaps. She, she certainly did. did so yeah. I think I think that either episode nine or episode ten, her her truck is going to get shot up. So when she tries well, to shut, I'm um, sorry. What I want to say about it, they better do it right. Like I don't want to see no. It it just has to. If you're going to take Brock out, it has to be right, y'all. Like I don't think it'll be the Brock, Brock I don't think going to break the series. The series will be over when she dies. Yes, I don't think it'll be this this season. I mean, I, I, no. I don't, think it'll, be, I don't think, think it'll be this series. I think that if she dies, it'll be the very last episode of the series. Exactly. Too, too no much way. presence on the show. There right. is, it, it, I, I, look, the thing is, even with Lou, 
I have a hard time believing that they're going to kill his character off, but it just seems like they're driving it in that direction. But mm-hmm. we might pick up and move to California or something. We might not see Lou again until the end. Or he may something. follow Jessica out there. Jessica is out there. <laughs> well, you remember, know, right. Tiff, 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 remember when we interviewed Lou um, and there was just something about his mannerisms or his character that made us believe that uh, he may be short lived uh, because of something he said. I, I know you asked him something and it was the way he responded that kind of gave us a, a, an inclination that he may or may not be there. But then I also want to say where we are with Kanan and Rock in the uh, series, just how many more series can we get out of this? Because we're at a point now of um, existentialism. I mean, there, there is a, there's coming to a point where right. Rock and Kanan are going to have to separate for yeah. Kanan to be Kanan. And, now, well, this is my point. And, and, and this and, it is right. inevitable. And so not just the inevitability, the question is how many more series can we get out of this before we start? Well, we got, we got, okay. So we got season, what is it? Season three. So we can get another season out of this, I suppose. Yeah, um, they, they've been renewed uh, for season four. So, right. they, so, we can, so, so do you think we can go beyond season four and still not have Kanan and Rock? If I could be candid, I'll say this. I think that it's thinning. I think that the first two seasons were way more open as far as like storylines. I feel like this season is cool. I like this season. It's been entertaining. Oh yeah, but, definitely. <laughs> but 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 it's a, it's a lot thinner. It's you know, and I won't say linear because it's not linear, but it's like we we all running out of road. I do think yeah. that the idea of Kanan and Rock has to come to a head eventually. It is. I think the story, the story with Lou may already be at a head. Mm-hmm. Um, Marvin's mm-hmm. redemption has already been realized. It's it's not. I mean, unless people start going to jail and his Rico case. Well, well, this, well, that's a real possibility. I was getting ready to pivot to Mars. Yeah. I was getting ready to pivot to Mars because listen, Howard Howard is playing games behind the scenes. We talked about this last. I, I think he he's trying to play close to the the task force. Even though my my prediction is I, Howard is getting ready to get caught. <laughs> I felt that from the very beginning of the season. Yeah. I was like. He's going, he's karma's coming for him. We see Captain Burke uh, went to uh, Nicole's father's house and, and now he, and he put it together. He knows, I told you, karma is coming for Howard. And yeah. So, except, him, except that, I, I, I guess at some point it will be, but the, uh, the other detective, you know, had kind of brought um, um, Howard in and said, look, I, I'm, you know, I get in trouble with, if the feds find out what I'm telling you and everything led back to Marvin. So I think you said okay. last week, Tiffany, that uh, Howard might give up Marvin yeah. to hide what he's done. Exactly. And, and what we saw in this episode, it seems more inevitable that that's exactly what Howard would do because the FBI is certainly they're smelling them, you know, they're smelling this situation. It's, and, and it seems to, you, you tie Marvin and then it probably won't be hard to tie uh, uh, Howard uh, in. So, so question is, does he give up Marvin to, to uh, I think save he's holding close to the, to the best. That's, that's the reason why he didn't tell Rock when she asked him last week about the task force. He withheld, he told her that Lou came to the station and stuff, but he withheld that Marvin, you know, that they're looking at Marvin. So I, he's keeping that close to the vest for a reason so he can save himself. Or he's right. going to try to save himself. But Marv, you know, speaking of Jason's point about the the redemption arc, like we see, we see it. Like Marv is, you know, trying to save, um, you know, save Lou. He's trying to be a good dad and stuff. Um, and then look, trying to be a good, um, you know, friend, friend to Gerald. To Gerald, who we said, didn't I tell you we had the bench warm? I had the bench warm for him on the who can get the hands list. Because mm-hmm. here he is, FBI informant. We talked about that. I said, I told you he's suspect. Oh, yeah. he's very. And and not just that. I, I got a hint from Marvin that uh, if Gerald continues on this line, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he's going to be I don't think he, I, he won't kill him because of the girls. I think that that, I uh, thought that, but I still think that. I think that 
he's he's actually giving him the rope to hang himself. And I think what he's going to do is he's going to take whatever information that Gerald, because Gerald seems to be spilling more information than he's actually taking in. He's probably going to use it against him on some level. I, I, I don't know. Marvin seems to be moving smarter. The yeah. first season of, of Marvin was very dumb. And I don't mean that he, like the, 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 the character was written well, but the, the character himself played as a as kind of an idiot. It's um, and, 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 and as we've gotten further along, he's becoming a little more, more strategic. He's becoming a little more, you know, heart filled as far as the way he's, he's um, like you said, handling people. And he's on the whole, whole thing. Like I said, the, the whole thing of redeeming his, his, his self from being like Juke, him and Juke's beef. He squashed all of that beef with her. He's, he's coming at everybody with this we can heal thing. When he did that last season where he was in um, rehab and he was going through all of the, um, the changes, he seemed to have matured enough that he's taken that into this season as a character. He definitely kept that consistent, which I thought was kind of good. I just think that, like you said, we're out of road on Marvin. Marvin has redeemed himself. Marvin's not an idiot father anymore. Marvin's not the, the slacker brother anymore. The slacker brother's now Lou. Marvin's no longer, you know, the guy who needs to be helped. He's actually helping people. So, like, he's helping Gerald. He's, you know, he's help, he, he, he tries to do the right thing. And he said when she asked him something, I, I think in this episode, she said something along the lines, are you happy with yourself? He said, I'm, he said something along the lines, I'm happier. Like yeah, I, he said, I'm, he said, do, are you... Are you happy with what you see looking back at you? Right. And he said, I'm I'm starting to. Right. Yeah. And so, and so you see that his character is coming to, I guess he's manifesting who he wants to be. And mm -hmm. he's trying to figure out how to how to integrate who he is into this crime world. And I think that, you know, for, for what it's worth, I don't know where else Marvin can go. I if I was a writer, I wouldn't know where to take that character, but like you said, to jail. And yeah, it, I was gonna say he's he's going to the he might yeah. be going to the band. Yeah, right. and so but, right, the but, then, but then you're starting to run out of leads because if we don't have Lou and we don't have Marvin, right? We we kind of just down to Rock and Canaan because everybody else is even though they're 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 they're, they're, they're like they're transitional players, they can kind of rotate in and out throughout. You know, like if one if, if we lost snaps and pops in the next season, you're not gonna care. If you yeah. lost Ronnie in the next season, you're not gonna care. Like Ronnie, Ronnie is a villain. You want to see the villain do what he got to do. He's like Lamar for BMF. He's just <laughs> somebody who is there to draw that storyline along, but he is not the kind of guy who you need to see next season. I don't, I don't right. know the way he's been talked about, but but I I want to um, piggyback on that about the Marv thing going to jail. One thing, if he does go to jail this season. I was telling my son when we talked about that. I said they could possibly do it the same way they did the ghost thing. Like at the end of season three, they locked ghosts up in the season finale. He was in jail for part of season four and then he got out. And I was like, that's one way that I can see them going doing the Marvin thing too and still having him a part of the show. Like, you know, that and, and, and it could be short lived. But the difference, because what if you the difference for ghosts is this though. Ghost still had a conflict to, to fight through. There's no conflict left for, for Marvin. See, the thing- Well, was, except he, that Marvin is the glue. And see, that's the other thing too, because Marvin mm -hmm. seems to be the glue. That's not the a camera. conflict. And, it's, and, a conflict no, it's not a conflict for Juke, because no, conflict. we still- Yeah, my point is the conflict arrives with the rest of the family because Marvin is so far, so far the glue for the family. And that includes Jukebox, Rock, and Lou. And you put him in jail, and then you would think that everything would just fall apart. All things fall apart at that point. So it would be interesting. That's why it's so interesting to me that we're moving toward this Marvin and jail type thing. So that would be interesting if he goes to jail and and and, and what happens to the whole clan at, at, when that happens. And maybe that's how everybody gets separated too. So, you know. It, it, One point that we mentioned is that we with the origin story with Canaan, we're looking for origins turn, but we're also looking for jukebox turn. Well, we're looking for the things that drove jukebox to the jukebox that she was in OG Power. And so the things that's happened to her so far, Nicole um, passed away. You know, um, her mom passed away. And then if something happens to Marvin, whether death or jail, that's another, that's conflict right there. That's, that's another, you know, notch on the belt of what helps 
makes Juke be who she became an OG power. Well, the and, and that's why that's why that address? stuff is happening. Well, one so, thing we just address in this in this particular thing, and I mean, I'm sure you get into it. I don't want to skip to it, but when Juke gets jumped, when she's in the train station and she gets jumped, you mm -hmm. you, you start seeing that she's starting to peel out of that thing. She, if you look at the way she's even interacting with everybody in the family, she's taking a way more dominant, you know, approach to everything. She's a, a little more docile in the, the first season. Second season, she starts to come into her own when, when her mother um, pulls her through that whole, you know, um, the thing where, where, they, where they go, to, you know, how they try to redeem her for being gay. They, she went through that whole process. And then when she came out of it, she came out of that with less innocence. And so I think that this thing with the group's going to fall apart and has to because it, it didn't go anywhere, obviously. Um, she, she, she left the military thing alone. So well, wait, go back. Stop right there. Because remember, uh, the, the, the sergeant said you signed a contract and here. And that's an interesting part. Mm. Now, the question is, does he let her out of that contract? Because, you know, Juke didn't say anything about her being in a, you know, as a, being a musician. And that's one of the reasons she wants to get out of the contract. The guy said, you signed a contract with the United States government. And, you know, and he said it's harder to leave than it is to get in. So it's interesting to find out in the next episode whether or not he allows her out so that she can become the police officer. Because if well, she if, goes... if, you, if you haven't been sworn in, if you haven't been sworn in in real life, I don't know about in the show. In real life, if you haven't been sworn in, you're not in the military. Right. Even well, she signed. I, I don't no, know what that. You say in real life, you can sign whatever until you actually go and do the right. swearing in and then go to boot camp. You're not in the military. Right. right. I, I think I think she just wanted to get the wiggle room. She was she was weighing her options and and she may still do it if this once this group thing falls apart. And I, I wanted to jump to you, Nina, because I know you know we need to get your thoughts on some things. <laughs> Yeah. So what I was thinking about as far as Marvin, if he it looks like they he's heading to the bank. OK. However, you remember in, in episode one, all those prisoners being released due to a dirty cop, Howard. So mm -hmm. maybe if he ends up. The other getting, yeah, it was the other, it was the other cop. But I'm saying maybe the same situation could happen. Where you know they got faulty information. He's been playing with the playing with the the files and all the investigation, getting all close to. So maybe he could get out, but I think he's headed there. And yeah, I think so too. I do agree with Jay about the 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 writing. It's almost like they're writing themselves into a corner, and these things have to happen because there's no other situation. And I don't see a situation where Rock and Canaan exist mm -hmm. in the same. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, but you know what? I think the writers know that because when we interviewed Sasha Penn and I asked him and I told him my, my prediction when I was talking to him, I was like, listen, the cafe, um, you know, Ghost Dad owned the bar, this and the other. I was like, we're moving. And he said, obviously, we, we have to move in a certain direction. So he acknowledged mm -hmm. that they are moving in a certain direction. So, what we're saying, they already know, and they are move, they are moving in that direction, and he and he acknowledged that. And um, right. I want to piggyback on what Jason said. I know we gotta tie this tie this up because we yeah. gotta get to the final thing that happened where yeah. Rock Rocky gets my game ball for what she did. But um, Jukebox also gets my game game ball for standing on business with them chicks mm -hmm. when they tried to jump her. She stood on business in um in Crystal. I my prediction. I think she gonna end up having to lay hands on that chick. You know, yeah. right? Well, you know what I said about that last, yeah. that last episode. And, and Ross said, Ross yeah. said she deserves it, and, <laughs> and I think she's gonna get him. She, yeah. she got, she got the wrong one with you. So um, now, yeah. So I, like you said, I just, we're getting short. I, what do you think about Marvin? Now, I mean, uh, Marvin telling Rock that Canaan is the one that's stepping in on their territory. Yeah. And um, and Rock is just she's beside herself. Um, well, she can't do what she did last time, which is like she can't plant something to change it because the people who are moving the pieces are bigger than her. And, and um, that's like when she tried to make those, like put the gun in his bag and all that stuff, she was doing strategic moves that were going to have the cops and people that would come looking at him. But now she's got people that are already aware what she's up to and they're not having it. So it's hard to say. Well, she took one product out of the, uh, off the shelf and that's Juliana. So, that's you know, what I was saying, Juliana, yeah. 
Yeah, that that right there is um, because you know that's that's where Ronnie went uh, to to you know try to uh, get his thing going, and now and I just love the way she went in on Juliana. I'm telling you, that was just it Me was too. so masterful. That's when she gets my game ball because I she showed Juliana was showing out this whole season, and I was like, mm. okay, she need to spin the block for Juliana. <laughs> A correction. I see. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh man, that was just. But I'm. I'm also worried that um, was it Juliana's cousin, who said to um, was it Joaquin? Yeah. He who said? Okay. Well, he said, "I want really? my people to." He said, "I want my people to uh, lay hands. I mean, lay eyes on what she's doing before you make a move." And then Rock said, "Well, I got my. I I got." Something to the fact I gotta do what I gotta do. Juliana, she said he knows I'm here, so that means he had already given her the okay. She would have been there. No, I hope so. No, I hope so. I, you know, because she said to Juliana, he knows I'm here. Well, he does know because when she got got she got the okay. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, she knew. I mean, he he knows because when he said what he said, Rock got up and said, "Well, I gotta do what I gotta do." And right right there, that's like saying, "Well, you can take all day if you want." But I got to do what I got to do. And my my timeline, my timeline might not meet your timeline. That's what I got out of it because that's how rock moves. Rock ain't yeah. waiting for no grass to grow. And they didn't show it. They didn't, they didn't show, show it. No, they didn't. No. But she said, but she said, he knows I'm here. So yeah, I, he does know. that He gave her the okay. If he knows rock, and handle if, that. if he knows rock, like <laughs> if he knows rock and rock said what she said, did. He knew that Rock was going to step on that. Yeah. Well, we, Juliana, R.I.P. <laughs> and he I said, mean, she had R.I.P. No, you know, you know, know what you got out of that one, though? You got huh? a body. Huh? Said you got a body out of that. Yeah, she did. So yeah, she got a body out of that. Listen, listen, listen I, I, I'm just going to keep saying, I'm going to keep laying that egg. My man coming back, Unique will be you back. Need- Look, Lamar, Lamar died and came back, right? Um, old girl on um on, on Ghost Power Book Two, she came back, Lauren. Um, Kanan yes, died. Yep. Hey, Kanan, Kanan died in the warehouse, as far as we knew. He came back. That's three people from the same group of writers. I promise you, this is gonna be the fourth one. You need to be back. That's my opinion. You, you might be right. You might uh, be right. Hey, hey, I mean, like we said, we you can't count it out because there was nobody. So there was nobody. There was um, nobody. I was heartbroken when they when that happened. Though I was like, so we'll we'll, we'll see. That that's Jason's prediction. I'm predicting that Howard is either going to the bang or, or might off himself or or be taken out. I think he's his days are numbered too. Um, let's do the uh. The hands, the hands yeah. list before we get out of here. Uh, yeah, well, of course. Um, so I'm giving Kane in the hands because uh, Me too. As, as far as his his moving, uh, it's just a little suspect to me. So I'm going to give Kane in the hands. I agree. Uh, I, I think that uh, I'm, you, I'm, of I'm course. Going <laughs> well, Ronnie, Ronnie been on our hands list every week, oh, so he no. has a permanent spot. I, 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 yeah, Ronnie, I, yeah. I think that move, that, that, that maneuver he made, like you said, with the social worker, mm-hmm. I think that's a U turn. I think it's going. I do agree with you that that's somewhere going to pop back up. It can pop back if, if, if he lives. Yeah, I think Ronnie, when he finds out about Juliana, yeah, that's he, another. That's, he really going. He going to come for Rock. Exactly. Um, either next, either next episode or, or episode ten. Anita, who was on your hands list? Crystal. Oh. Crystal definitely need to be on a hands list. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's yes. not forget my boy Lou. Let's keep him on the hands list. Oh, Lou needs to stay on the hands list too. But yeah. but Lou did stand on business with them people to try to rob him. He was drunk and he still oh, held true. it down. Well, I was doing... like, okay, Lou. Look, you bring a knife <laughs> to a gunfight. But I gotta, you know, please. <laughs> yeah, he did. He held it down. Yeah, you bring a knife to a gunfight. I mean, you, come on. Okay. But but he was wrong. They thought they could just roll on him. And he was oh. like, you don't even know how to roll on him. Like, yeah. But yeah. um, the game ball, I'm giving Rock the game wow. ball for Hamlet Juliana. It was beautiful. It yeah, was okay. Beautiful. For that purpose, yeah. Poetic justice. I Poetic it. justice. Yeah. It was. I give uh, Jukebox the game ball. Game ball. Game ball. Yes, the, uh, she got the lead. 
I, 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 give mom, I, give oh. that, I give it to mom. I give it to mom. Yes. No, no, don't say for taking the pictures on my yes, man. Oh, we, you know, we didn't talk yes. about that. Yeah, we didn't yes. talk. Yes, look Excellent yes. move. Excellent yes. move. Oh, I was, I was hollering. I was <laughs> cracking up when he was <laughs> taking <laughs> the pictures. He was like, I ain't going to tell him nothing, but I'm going to show her some show things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know. For, for me, he gets the game ball. That's more. Yes, yeah. he does. He held it down. He's been clutch all he, season because, he you know, yeah. Terry was tripping, not trying to work mm -hmm. with Rock. But he said, little brother, little brother. I think Rock could relate to little brother because she got her was, own Lou. <laughs> more, more, more strategic. That's what I'm saying. He the moves he's making shows him to be a completely different character than they started with in the first season, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's why I said he, he has too much growth that he would he would have to evolve out of the show, meaning like he's gonna evolve either, like you said, where he, his his character is crippled into prison. Or he's he'd have to leave the business, and I don't see him leaving the business. No, nah, or he or he'll have to die or something. Yeah. You know, I mean, because I think whatever happens to him is going to impact jukebox. But Not anyway, <laughs> go ahead. I know, I know. He's a, he's a fave. I, I feel you. I feel you, Nina. <laughs> but anyway, um, we went along. Yeah, we, we he, along. Like, we, yeah, good. but it was a good discussion. I enjoyed having you, Nita and Jay Bill on. Um, we gotta wrap this up. We're looking forward to episode nine. You know, you guys follow us, please, on all of our social media channels, X, Facebook, TikTok. Uh subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and we will see you guys next week for episode nine. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. It looks good. No. Thank you guys. Thank have a good have a good evening. I've been dreaming about you. Wishing you would